been a while since we've done a video um, and believe it or not I'm back on with the clock build the tower clock build so uh, updates on that very shortly I've actually been working on that um, but before I do that I'm doing another quick video on the world of ward the dividing head or the electronic divider I should say since I did one what 10 years ago um, he's come on a long way with updates mine is old and broken and I've absolutely abused it so I thought I'd treat myself to uh, to a new one um, and like I say he does this now as a full build kit and I definitely recommend that uh, what a great value it is uh, however I was lucky enough uh, to to get the case and a few other bits he doesn't actually I don't believe sell it as a as a true kit like this but he certainly sells the parts individually I've managed to get my hands on a pre-cut case as well um, so we're going to put that together today um, and see where that takes us okay so I've gone ahead and fitted the keyboard um, and or keypad I should say and I've just done that with the double nuts just to stand it off just so we can get a standoff that's uh, just just over flush the fantastic keypad that comes with it does have an ever so slight embossed I don't know if that's the right word but embossed um, keypad holes so you can see that and we're going to have to uh, remount this we're going to remove it it's the DM556 and we're going to have to remove it from the case um, and then we're going to mount it on this back plate okay so I've just removed the two screws from either side um, which then frees up this back space because we want to remove this heat sink because we're actually going to use the uh, back of the case the metal case as the as the new heat sink so we're going to go ahead and do that now so let's pull this thing apart okay so that's that we're going to use the plastic top we're going to cover it back up with that we just don't need this base plate so i'm going to go ahead and unscrew these screws and remove the motherboard so we've removed the heat paste so that's the thermal paste reapplied um, and now oops, got this in position we can put this back down okay so there's the stepper motor mounted and that can still be screwed on there we've got some little screws now to fit onto the end so I'm just going to do that off camera and then okay so that's the stepper driver all nicely laid out onto the lid so let's get on now to mounting the uh, controller board and the screen okay so the control board came attached to the screen I've just taken a little bit of time to make sure that I've double screwed these to stand them off to the right height so that when this is screwed down it will be flush with the uh, with the overlay okay so that's where we're up to now got the keypad in we've got the module in and the lcd screen in and the buttons of course and we've also got that mounted the stepper driver mounted on the okay so despite me taking my time on this i have come to something that i just need a unfortunately a little bit of impatience um, this ward has recommended the uh, this lovely XLR case adapter which or case mounted fitting I should say which is brilliant and it's all all perfectly uh, fitted and screwed up for it but unfortunately the end of my motor actually has a female on so I need a male in there um, which is like this obviously that is too big and will fall through so I've just machined and it was probably more effort I should have just ordered a uh, a normal female one but I've just machined this up which uh, sits in the hole there and then lines up and then I'll be able to use uh, two M3 mounting screws and then put my XLR connector in. Okay so that's the XLR jack fitted I'm quite happy with how that's turned out it was an awful lot of effort um, but all done and then just to point out as well because this is pre-drilled he also has the option of a um, opto isolator which fits on those four screw holes so I've just blanked those off with some little M3 screws uh, and also another one that I've blanked off is uh, this is a little another hole for another auxiliary jack uh, for other connections uh, and I'm not going to use that obviously I didn't want Swarf getting in there so I've blanked that off with a, a little button as well 
Okay, so that's all connected now. So we've got the XLR jack ready to connect to the stepper motor, um, to the motor section. We've got the direction and step, and then the two grounds coming to the grounds. And then we've got the power connector, which is connecting the module and then coming on uh, and powering the stepper motor. So it's time to fit it all together. Okay, so we've aligned the overlay as best we can and as square as we can. And also it's dictated to by the position of the screen as well. The window's perfectly sized for the screen. I've put a piece of tape, solid tape up at the top. And the idea is that that's gonna act as a hinge so that basically I can put it in exactly the same place. So I think it is now time to go for it. It's all as square as I can get it. So we're gonna lift this back. We're gonna remove the M3, the back sheet, sorry. from the top we're going to work our way down and I think that looks pretty square and there we go that's on so I'm just going to work around it now I'm just going to literally push it in from the middle to the edges I'm just going to work around the edges use a cloth remove the solid tape and that now should be stuck down. Let's hope I've got the, yeah, I've got the buttons all in the right place. So that's all good. Three, yep, yeah, so that's all good. Buttons feel nice, screen isn't raised, so that's perfect. Okay, so the controller is ready for its first use. I've uh, attached it to the dividing head and we need uh, three holes in this and we need them uh, 0.4687 um, inches on the radius. So there's a few ways of using this and kind of just a bit of an overview of this. If you've not used one before, all the instructions are on Word of World site, so probably far better than I'm explaining now, but you've got jog function, which literally will just keep jogging it a set number of degrees. Uh, you've got divisions, which I'm gonna use in a minute. You've got degrees if you wanna send it a set number of degrees. So say you want it to move it 30 degrees, press go and off it'll go in 30 degrees. And then you've got continuous revolutions as well. So it'll just cl literally click click, click the go button, left or right or clockwise, add to clockwise. And it'll just keep going in that, in that direction. So we're gonna go in uh, number two, divisions. Uh, and I've already set this, so I, I want three, so zero, zero, three, uh, and then go. And then we're ready basically so we're going to drill our first hole and then we're going to move and then we're going to press the forward button and it will go to its next place so i'll drill the hole now and then we'll move it on okay so that's hole one done we we'll come back over here press forward Now do should lock that down, but I always find the stepper motor holds it tight enough for certainly a little drilling operation like this. Have a look at my clock video for that. Clean that top off. And then what we should find, hopefully, is that, um, just checking in like that when I was talking about it. Move that round to the last position. Super quiet, by the way. This is a really old stepper motor as well. I got this literally years ago. And there we go, bang on, back on that first position again okay so i hope you enjoyed watching these are a fantastic uh, addition to the workshop and i've been using them for years like i say i'll check out i'll put my other links um or my other videos in the description okay thanks for watching cheers